Now, keep in mind, Speaker Pelosi defied the Biden administration by going to Taiwan. So why is President Biden so weak on China? Does it have something to do with Hunter and his lucrative business deals? Or maybe Joe's years-long close personal friendship with President Xi? Or could it be that Biden is just weak and ineffective? Joining us now with more is the host of the Monica Crowley podcast, Monica Crowley, along with Gatestone Institute senior fellow Gordon Chang. You know, we've, we touched on this uh, with uh, our first two guests, is that it seems perplexing, Monica, about Joe Biden's inability to act it seems not just on China, but almost on every other issue, unless, of course, it's hurting the American people. Uh, do you think that this is really a, a personal problem that Joe Biden has when it comes to uh, his dealings in the past with China and that it keeps him from being able to do the right thing? Well, remember, Timmy, that uh, President Obama, his boss, for eight years, once said never underestimate Joe Biden's ability to bleep things up. And then Robert Gates, who served a number of presidents as Secretary of Defense, said that Joe Biden has been wrong on every foreign policy issue for the last 40 to 50 years. So, again, this is no surprise. Joe Biden's always been a hack. But now he is president of the United States and America's commander in chief. And there is evidence that the Biden family has benefited tremendously from the CCP and Chinese Communist Party related entities to the tune of well over $10 million. So the CCP and those entities do not write those kinds of checks without expecting something in return. So obviously there's a lot of speculation, Tammy, as to whether or not this president is compromised. And if so, shame on Joe Biden for putting his family's and, and personal interests ahead of America's national security interests and ahead of the American people. This is why, you know, we have tremendous weakness in dealing with this fundamental existential threat to the U.S. The, the threat that the CCP poses to us, Tammy, is far more dangerous than anything the Soviet Union uh, presented to us because the Soviets essentially presented a one-dimensional threat, which was nuclear, and it was existential. The Chinese threat is a hydra-headed threat. It's economic, it's military, it's geostrategic. It's in terms of flooding this country with deadly fentanyl and other drugs, killing hundreds of thousands of Americans. This is a multi-layered threat, mm -hmm. and this president is crippled in so many ways that he can't and won't take them on. You know, it's remarkable, and excellent analysis there. Gordon, uh, clearly your background in understanding the nature of the beast of China that they are everywhere, they've planned uh, uh, so far ahead of time, that it seems unlikely that somehow America would allow someone, let's say, beholden to China, become the president of the United States at this period of time. But maybe it actually is perfect, considering what's been dealt with and delivered up until this point. What's your uh, take on how we, where we stand right now? I think we're in very, very perilous waters. You know, Tammy, the problem right now is that inside China, there is a debt crisis, bank runs, mortgage boycotts, COVID lockdowns. And that means Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, has an incentive to distract the Chinese people from his own policy mistakes. And that means China is lashing out. And it, we think about Taiwan, of course, because of the speaker's visit. But right now, China is also moving against India, the Philippines, and Japan. Those <laughs> missile launches a few hours ago, they land, five of those 11 missiles landed in Japanese water. Great and point. that is an extreme provocation. Well, and in addition to, obviously, still, the relationship between China and North Korea and North Korea's pressure on, on Japan as well, a clearly a, our key relationship there in that region, do you think uh, that and North Korea seems to be wanting to get some attention, but that is almost ignored by this administration? Do you think North Korea is going to pop up in the midst of this, uh, presenting another uh, larger existential issue? Yeah. Analysts right now are thinking that the North Koreans will detonate an atomic device yeah. soon. And we got to remember that, that although they haven't done it for a long time, they got to validate their test design. So they will pop one off in the not too distant future. And we know, uh, you know, Monica, thank you, sir. We know that, of course, Iran has an interest in what uh, North Korea has been doing. It seems like this now becomes this interest by this a, a trio of countries by, by these terrorist nations, if you will, uh, to want to act now quickly in the next year and a half 
uh, as the Biden administration becomes weaker and uh, more troubled here at home. Yeah, and there is close coordination and cooperation between Russia, China, and Iran, as well as North Korea, sort of on the fringes. But they're all working hand in glove. And all of America's enemies understand that they've got a pretty limited window of opportunity here, Tammy, to act and to advance their own interests at the expense of ours. They know that Congress is likely to change hands starting January 1st, maybe both houses. So there might be some additional restrictions. But they also realize that they've got another two years under this president or a successor before there is a change in leadership at the top in the U.S. And so, you know, you can't really blame America's enemies for seizing this opportunity. You know, they'd be negligent if they didn't. But they also know that the, the U.S. is not going to retaliate in any meaningful way because the commander in chief doesn't, uh, is not going to pull the trigger in, in, in any meaningful way. So, of course, they're going to take this time. And frankly, if the U.S. is down for the count, then our allies are down for the count. Yeah, and exactly. there is tremendous concern in the region, in Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, Australia, a lot of worries that, in fact, they're on their own because essentially they are. Yeah, we heard, we heard about that certainly after Afghanistan, indeed, especially concerns from Taiwan about being on their own. So we're excellent reminders. Uh, thank you both very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.